Heart Medicine Devotion, Take a Seat. Luke ten thirty eight to 39 Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Ephesians three seventeen to 19 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Second Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Scripture reading, Luke ten thirty eight to forty two, and John twelve one to eight. I have a confession to make. Sometimes I steal stuff from my pastor. Being a pastor's daughter, I know that's actually considered a compliment. And if nothing else, this shows that I was doing more than planning lunch or anticipating my next cup of coffee during Sunday morning service. Though I could always go for a good cup of coffee. The jumping-off point is the story of Mary and Martha in Luke 10, 38-42. Of course, this story has been done to death, but it's no wonder as these five little verses are packed with thought-provoking details. My pastor recently emphasized that there was more to Martha than meets the eye. She wasn't the villain of the story. She opened her home to the Lord, served, and wanted everything to be right— all good qualities when kept in proportion to what was needful. Martha's attitudes and priorities might have needed some tweaking, and she should maybe not assume what Jesus should do on her behalf, but she was a good girl who loved the Lord. But it got me thinking, what really set Martha off? Was it just the work, the extra load of dishes, or the fact that the food would be cold by the time it all got on the table? Or was there something more? something that wouldn't necessarily jump off the page to us today. Mary sat at Jesus' feet, a term used to describe the process of rabbinical teaching. Remember, Jesus was considered to be a teacher, and he was frequently referred to as rabbi. So here's how a rabbi taught. It was not a one-sided affair. It was an ongoing exchange where students learned by asking questions. Like when the boy Jesus sat with the doctors in the temple. The Bible tells us that young Jesus was listening and asking them questions. Can I tell you that I think Mary was doing the same thing? I've always thought of Mary as a passive listener, someone who sat quietly on the floor staring wide-eyed at Jesus. My opinion has changed dramatically. I now think that Mary was actively engaged in discussion with Jesus, questioning, challenging, determined to understand. It was bold and audacious for a woman of that day, and because her heart longed to know God, her audacity was honored by God. And I wonder if Martha's impertinence, Lord, dost thou not care? And her appalled reaction was really the call of the culture. After all, who did Mary think she was? Had she forgotten that her place was in the kitchen and not in the conversation? The study of scripture and the opportunity to engage in a dialogue about the ways of God was a privilege reserved for men. In that culture, access to God began with men and at best trickled down to women. But Jesus challenged Jewish culture and offered everyone, the poor, lepers, publicans and prostitutes, Gentiles, and yes, good girls in general, direct access to God, and he died to give us the privilege of reconciliation and a personal relationship with God. Mary's audacity had a purpose. In John 12, Mary would anoint Jesus' feet, and Jesus would acknowledge that she was the only one who had really been paying attention. Martha still served, but she no longer questioned her sister's place at the feet of Jesus. And don't you question your place either. No matter where you are in your walk or what your struggles may be, God wants to reveal his heart to you. He wants to give you understanding. 
His word is a treasure trove of truth, and he wants you to dig it out, talk it out, and work it out with fear and trembling. Serve the Lord with gladness, but come before his presence and get to know him, because he is good and he deserves our full and audacious attention. Take a seat at his feet, my friend. We have much to talk about. Your prescription? Study the scriptures for yourself. Ask questions. Pray about them. Take them to your pastor and other Christians. The truths God wants to reveal to us are endless. Never stop learning about Him. God bless you.